What if I told you that World War II was the most destructive conflict in human history? Would you believe me? Picture this. A global war that lasted from 1939 to 1945, involving many of the world's nations. This war split the globe into two opposing military alliances, causing unprecedented destruction and loss. The scale of World War II is beyond anything humanity had ever witnessed before. Let's delve into the history and explore the events that unfolded during this catastrophic period. The war started in 1939, but its roots trace back to the end of World War I. A conflict of such magnitude did not simply materialize overnight. Instead, it grew from the seeds sown in the aftermath of the Great War. One of the pivotal moments that set the stage for the Second World War was the signing of the Treaty of Versailles. The Treaty of Versailles was meant to be a peace agreement between the Allies and Germany to ensure that a war of such devastation would never happen again. However, it was seen by many, especially the Germans, as a punitive document. The treaty imposed heavy financial reparations on Germany, limited its military capabilities and stripped it of its territories. This led to widespread resentment among the German people which sowed the seeds of another conflict. This resentment provided fertile ground for the rise of Adolf Hitler and the Nazi party. Hitler, with his charismatic speeches and promises to restore Germany to its former glory, managed to manipulate the grievances of the German people. He blamed the country's woes on the Treaty of Versailles and the Jewish population, sparking an intense and dangerous wave of nationalism and anti-Semitism. In 1933, Hitler became Chancellor of Germany and started rebuilding the military in direct violation of the Treaty of Versailles. His expansionist policies led to the annexation of Austria and the Sudetenland, with the international community largely turning a blind eye to these aggressive actions. But the world could no longer ignore the threat when, on September 1, 1939, Hitler ordered the invasion of Poland. Despite the Polish army's valiant efforts, they were unable to withstand the German forces. Britain and France, bound by treaties to Poland, declared war on Germany two days later. And so, in 1939, the world was once again plunged into war. The stage was set, the players were in their places, and the curtains were lifted on a conflict that would change the course of human history. Two opposing military alliances formed, the Allies and the Axis. The Allies, a powerful coalition of nations, united against a common enemy. This alliance was primarily made up of the United States, the Soviet Union, the United Kingdom and China. Each had their own motivations for joining the war. The United States, initially reluctant to get involved, were drawn into the fray following the attack on Pearl Harbor. The Soviet Union, despite initially signing a non-aggression pact with Germany, found itself at war after Hitler's betrayal. The United Kingdom, having made a commitment to protect Poland, declared war on Germany when Hitler invaded. China, already at war with Japan since the mid-30s, officially joined the Allies after the attack on Pearl Harbor. On the other side, the Axis powers, a tripartite pact of Germany, Italy and Japan, had their own ambitions. Adolf Hitler, the German Führer, sought to establish a new order of absolute Nazi German hegemony in Europe. Benito Mussolini, the Italian Prime Minister, desired to establish a new Roman Empire. Emperor Hirohito of Japan, though seen as a figurehead, was the symbol of Japan's imperialistic ambitions in Asia and the Pacific. But what spurred these nations to such drastic measures? The motivations were manifold. Hitler was driven by a toxic mix of racial purity and territorial expansion. Mussolini, inspired by the glories of ancient Rome, sought to restore Italy to its former grandeur. Japan, fueled by a desire to become the dominant power in the Pacific, embarked on a path of aggressive expansion. Yet motivations alone do not a war make. A complex web of treaties, alliances and diplomatic failures set the stage for this global conflict. A failure to address the grievances of the First World War, economic instability and the rise of totalitarian regimes all played their part in the escalation of hostilities. 
So we see the stage was not set by mere chance or whim, but by a series of calculated moves and missteps, ambitions and alliances. The stage was set for a conflict that would span the globe. The war saw a number of significant battles and turning points. Each of these events, in its own way, reshaped the landscape of conflict, steering the world towards a new direction. Let's start with the Battle of Britain. This was the first major campaign to be fought entirely by air forces. In the summer and autumn of 1940, the skies over Britain were filled with the roar of aircraft engines. Germany, with its formidable Luftwaffe, sought to gain air superiority and bring Britain to its knees. But the Royal Air Force resisted with indomitable spirit. The British victory marked a turning point, proving to the world that the Nazi war machine was not invincible. Then, across the Atlantic, the attack on Pearl Harbor. On a quiet Sunday morning in December 1941, Japanese planes swooped down on the American naval base in Hawaii. This surprise attack jolted the United States out of its neutrality, propelling it into the global conflict. The sleeping giant was awakened and it began to mobilize its vast resources for war. Now let's move to the frozen city of Stalingrad. The Battle of Stalingrad was one of the most brutal and devastating conflicts of the war. The Soviet Union and Nazi Germany clashed in a fierce struggle for control of the city. The battle raged on for five grueling months, from August 1942 to February 1943. The Soviets, despite being pushed to the brink, managed to encircle and capture the German Sixth Army. This marked the first major defeat of Hitler's armies on the Eastern Front and began a series of Soviet victories. Finally, we reached the shores of Normandy. The D-Day invasion on the 6th of June 1944 was the largest seaborne invasion in history. Allied forces from the United States, Britain and Canada launched an ambitious assault on the heavily fortified beaches of Normandy, France. Despite the heavy losses, the Allies secured a foothold in continental Europe. This paved the way for the liberation of Western Europe from Nazi control. Each of these key events was a turning point, a moment when the tide of war began to shift. The Battle of Britain showed the world that Hitler's forces could be resisted, the attack on Pearl Harbor drew the United States into the conflict, adding its considerable might to the Allied cause. The Battle of Stalingrad marked a significant defeat for the Axis powers and signaled a shift in momentum on the Eastern Front. And the D-Day invasion opened a new front in Western Europe, setting the stage for the final push towards victory. The fabric of the Second World War was woven with threads of courage, determination and sacrifice. These pivotal moments changed the course of the war and ultimately determined its outcome. Amidst the chaos of war, one of the most horrific genocides in history was taking place. This was the Holocaust, a systematic state-sponsored extermination by Nazi Germany, led by Adolf Hitler against six million Jews. It was a genocide of an unprecedented scale, one that sought to annihilate an entire people solely based on their religious and ethnic identity. In the heart of Europe, concentration and extermination camps were erected. Places like Auschwitz-Birkenau, Treblinka and Sobibor became synonymous with death. These were not ordinary prisons. They were factories of death where men, women and children were methodically stripped of their humanity. Starvation, forced labour, inhumane medical experiments and gas chambers were their grim realities. But the Holocaust was not just about the physical annihilation. It was also about the psychological torment. Jews were systematically dehumanized, their identities reduced to numbers tattooed on their arms. Their possessions, their dignity, their very identities were stolen from them. Beyond the six million Jews, millions of other people were also targeted by the Nazis. Roma, disabled individuals, political dissidents, homosexuals and others whom the Nazis deemed undesirable were subjected to similar fates. Their stories too are part of the Holocaust narrative. The Holocaust was a crime of such magnitude that it shook the world to its core. It was a testament to the depths of human cruelty and indifference. It was a stark reminder of what can happen when hate is allowed to fester unchecked. Yet, amidst the darkness, there were also stories of resistance, resilience and survival. 
There were those who risked their lives to help others, those who managed to survive against all odds. Their stories serve as beacons of hope and humanity in the face of unspeakable evil. The Holocaust remains a stark reminder of the depths of human cruelty. It stands as a testament to our capacity for inhumanity, but also our potential for compassion and courage. It is a chapter of our history that we must never forget lest we risk repeating it. By 1945, the tide of war had turned against the Axis. The world held its breath as the final act of this global tragedy unfolded. The stage was set in Berlin, the heart of the Third Reich, now under siege from all sides. It was a city on the brink, its once grand facade marred by the scars of relentless bombardment. Trapped within the crumbling walls of his bunker, Adolf Hitler found himself cornered, the dreams of his thousand-year Reich fading into the smoke-filled horizon. With the Red Army closing in and the noose of defeat tightening, he made his final desperate move. On April 30th, 1945, Hitler committed suicide leaving behind a world forever marked by his reign of terror. Yet his death did not bring immediate peace. The war machine he had set in motion continued to grind on, driven by the relentless will of those still loyal to the fallen tyrant. It wasn't until May 7, 1945, that Germany, now under the leadership of Karl Donitz, offered its unconditional surrender to the Allies. The European theatre of war had finally fallen silent, but halfway across the world, another battle raged on. The Pacific theatre was still ablaze, the Empire of Japan refusing to yield. The Allies, weary from years of conflict, made the decision to deploy a weapon of unprecedented power. In August 1945, the United States dropped two atomic bombs on the cities of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. The devastation was unimaginable, the loss of life, catastrophic. It was a grim demonstration of the lengths humanity would go to in its pursuit of victory. Japan, facing the full might of this new weapon, had no choice but to surrender. On August 15, 1945, Emperor Hirohito announced his country's capitulation, bringing an end to the hostilities in the Pacific. However, it wasn't until September 2nd, aboard the USS Missouri, that the official documents were signed the ink marking the end of the most devastating conflict in human history. On September 2nd, 1945, World War II officially ended. The world breathed a collective sigh of relief, but it was a breath tinged with sorrow and loss. The echoes of the war would linger, its effects shaping the world for generations to come. The end of the war was not just a conclusion, but the start of a new chapter in our global story a chapter written in the hope that such a conflict would never be repeated. The war was over, but its impact was far-reaching and profound. In the wake of World War II, the world was a vastly different place. The immense destruction and loss of life were sobering reminders of the cost of global conflict. The end of the war was not an end to the world's struggles, but rather the beginning of a new era. The ashes of war brought forth the phoenix of unity. Representatives from 50 nations gathered in San Francisco in the summer of 1945. Their mission? To establish the United Nations, an international body aimed at promoting peace and preventing future wars. The UN Charter, signed on June 26th, was a beacon of hope in a world weary from war. Yet as the world came together in unity, it was also splitting apart. The end of World War II set the stage for a new kind of conflict the Cold War. The world was divided into two camps, each under the influence of a superpower. On one side, the United States, championing democracy and capitalism. On the other, the Soviet Union, upholding communism. The ideological battle between these two giants would shape international relations for the next four decades. But the aftermath of World War II was not just about political and ideological shifts. It was also about the human cost and the lasting effects of the war on the world. Cities lay in ruins, economies were shattered, and millions of people were displaced. The war had touched every corner of the globe and its scars were etched deep into the fabric of societies. The post-war world also saw a surge in technological advancements spurred by wartime innovations. The fields of aviation, nuclear energy, and even space exploration saw major leaps forward. 
These advancements, while born out of conflict, have since been harnessed for peace and the betterment of mankind. World War II shaped the world we live in today, and its lessons continue to resonate. The echoes of the past remind us of the cost of war, the importance of unity, and the power of human resilience. We are the heirs of this legacy, and it is our responsibility to ensure that its lessons are not forgotten. So, was World War II the most destructive conflict in human history? The answer is a resounding yes. We've explored the beginnings, the key players, the turning points, the unimaginable horrors of the Holocaust, the end of the war, and its lasting aftermath. The echoes of this war still reverberate today, shaping our world and our understanding of human capacity for both cruelty and resilience. Let's never forget the cost of war and strive for a world of peace and understanding.